For number three, we're going to see if there is a linear relationship between x and y. And first we want to look at the scatter diagram of the data. So we can look at all of our data here. If we open this in StatCrunch, we can get a scatter diagram. Or you can graph one by hand if you have some graph paper. But in StatCrunch, we want to do graph, the scatter plot, x and y. And when you click compute, it'll give you the scatter diagram. And so find the picture that matches closest to that. And then compute the correlation coefficient. Jumping back into stat crunch, we can do stat, summary stats, correlation. And we're looking to see if there's a correlation between x and y. I hold down control to get them both selected over here. And then I just need to hit compute at the bottom. And it gives me the correlation coefficient. And so we would enter that in. And then to determine if there's a linear relationship or not, let's look at the textbook, page 197. It tells you how to test for a linear relationship. We're going to figure out the absolute value of that correlation coefficient, which we just did in part B. And so the absolute value of this is, the, uh, just make it positive, 2.215. And then what you do is find the critical value in the table, in table two of the appendix. So you can go to, it's page A2 in the textbook, or it's also linked here in StatCrunch. But there were five pieces of data in our sample, five points that we plotted in our scatter diagram. So our critical value is 0.878. And our value here is it's not greater than the critical value, so we determine that there is no linear relationship. If the absolute value of the correlation coefficient is greater, then we can say a linear relationship does exist between the two vari variables. Otherwise, we can't say no relationship exists, but we say that no linear relationship exists. They don't appear to follow a linear trend. For number four, we're seeing if there is a correlation between a child's height and head circumference. And so we're going to try to use the height to predict what the head circumference will be if there's a correlation. So we say the height is the explanatory variable that we're using to explain or predict what the head circumference will be. Head circumference is the response. Let's draw a scatter diagram of this. I need to click up there to open it in StatCrunch. And then we're going to go to the graph, scatter plot for our height, and our y variable is our response of head circumference. So click Compute, and here's what it looks like. So we're going to find our answer here that resembles that. To calculate the correlation coefficient, Stat, summary stats, correlation of these two. I'm hitting compute. And there it is. And so we're going to determine if a linear relationship exists. If this is bigger than the critical value. And how many things of data did we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So our uh, critical value here is 0.707. And since our correlation coefficient is larger than that, we would say that it does appear that there is a linear association between the child's height and their head circumference. And since this is a positive number, we say it's a positive linear association. One thing I want to add on that I kind of skipped over as I went over the scatter diagrams is when you're picking the right scatter plot here, Pay attention to your x and y axis. Your x should be your explanatory variable and your y should be your response variable. So some of the graphs look exactly the same, but pick the one that has the right labels on the axis. 
For number five, we're looking to see if a person's brain is related to their mental capacity. So we have some male and female samples. If you jump into StatCrunch, I've calculated the correlation coefficients for the females and for the males. And I did that stats, summary stats, correlation. And for females, you would select those two and hit compute. Uh, for males, you would select those two and hit compute. And so there's our values. And if these values were really close to a positive one, there would be a positive linear uh, correlation. If they were really close to a negative one, we would say there was a negative linear relationship. But these are pretty close to zero. Um, and when the value of the correlation coefficient is close to zero, that means there is no linear relationship. Page 194 of the textbook is a good page to refer to for this problem. You can see how cl uh, close to a positive one has the upward trend and positive linear relationship. A negative one has a downward trend and negative linear relationship. And then something close to zero has no linear relationship. 